Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List, and this is your complete guide to what to do if you're seeing a game here at Manchester City. How to buy tickets, how to get here, what to eat, what's there to do, and how to have the most amazing time at one of the best football stadiums in England. Manchester City, the current Premier League champions. Their meteoric rise to the top of the football pyramid here in this country has been the stuff of fairy tale. They seem to be winning trophy after trophy, and it's attracted them a lot of fans around the world. And a lot of people want to come here but don't know how, so this video explains everything, the whole process, from buying tickets to actually getting here. Ok, so first things first, you're going to need some tickets. And the best way to do that is to go on the official Manchester City website and click on the tickets page. Now most of the tickets are available for general sale, you can just buy them immediately. However, the tickets to some of the big games, i.e. against Real Madrid or Liverpool or Manchester United, the tickets are restricted and you'll need to be a Citizens member in order to buy these tickets. But if you find the game that you want, click on the game, click on the map and select the seat that you want. It will tell you how much it costs and all you have to do is pay for it and whoop, there it is. You can also take a chance and try and buy a ticket live at the Manchester City ticket sales office which is located at the side of the stadium. But starting this season, Manchester City have imposed that they send the tickets directly to your phone, so once you buy a ticket, they'll send you an email with a link to download it to your digital wallet. Simply open up this email and click on the relevant link, either Apple Wallet or Google Pay, and what this will do is they will automatically download the tickets to your pay app. This ensures that the tickets are yours and yours only, and it stays away from the hands of the ticket touts. To access this ticket, all you have to do is click on the Google Pay app and literally click on the relevant game. It generates the ticket which you will need to activate the turnstiles. More on that later. Make sure you've got your ticket downloaded to your phone before you actually come here. If you're having trouble with your ticket for some reason, speak to a member of staff and they're most likely going to be in these pink high visibility vests. Ok, so you've got your ticket, now it's time to actually get here. The Etihad Stadium is located in the east side of Manchester, in the complete opposite direction to their neighbours. And it's on the corner of Alan Turing Way and Ashton New Road two of the busiest roads here in East Manchester, so as you can imagine, the traffic here is pretty terrible anyway, but on a match day, it can be pretty pretty painful. If you're not from around these parts, you'll most likely need to get a train into the middle of Manchester. From there, you'll need to transfer over to the Metrolink system, aka the trams, and you'll need to just get on a tram stop somewhere in the middle of the city, and you'll need to take the light blue line or the orange line to a stop called Etihad Campus. Once you get off at Etihad Campus, you're literally on the north side of the stadium. And yes, as soon as you exit the turnstiles, you'll be met with the site of the city store and the stadium is directly behind it, so it's the easiest method of actually getting to the stadium. And there's various buses that will take you to the Etihad Stadium, but if you're a local like me, you're most likely going to have to drive and negotiate the horrible traffic at this junction. You can park in one of the official parking bays around the stadium, you'll need to book in advance of course. Even though the car parks are huge, getting in and out of them can be a pain in the backside. So I'm a stingy bastard and I don't like paying for parking, usually I dump my car in one of the many side streets around the stadium, and I usually do this about a mile away so that I'm not stuck in gridlock traffic after the match. More on that later. Here at Manchester City is really not that bad trying to get here. The traffic can be a little painful, so I highly recommend that if you do come here, get here really, really early and take in some of the great pre match atmosphere. Right, so you've got your tickets and you're here, but what's there to do around the stadium? Well, believe it or not, plenty. The first thing you'll notice is this white bridge that connects the Etihad Stadium to the Etihad campus, which is Manchester City's training ground. If you've got a bit of time, check out one of the best training facilities in the country, complete with its own mini stadium, where the women play their matches. But walking across the bridge on a match day is an experience in itself. And guys, check out that view. 
it makes for some excellent photo and video opportunities. So if you are a visitor to our country, definitely get a picture here. After the bridge, familiarize yourself with the exterior of the stadium. Especially if you're an away fan, your entrance is at Gate L, located near the south side of the stadium. It's pretty cool to walk around the stadium and learn the history of Manchester City and some of their best players. And it highlights the timeline of their meteoric rise to football superstardom. Recently, they've added statues of some of their best players. So this one, a statue of Vincent Company, their former captain. It's also nice to laugh at various idiots trying to imitate the poses on these statues. I never understood why people did that. You'll also find the statue of David Silva and starting next year, you'll even see a statue of their most famous goal scorer, Sergio Aguero. And you'll notice from the video footage here that even though it's pretty busy, Manchester folk are all right, so you won't get any trouble here. Even if you're a fan of the away team, like these bunch of Southampton fans here, you'll receive absolutely no hassle from the home crowd. It's a relatively safe environment and you really shouldn't be fearing for your safety anywhere around here. If you carry on walking around the stadium, you'll eventually get to this giant Man City sign, which is a great photo opportunity, especially if you have kids, and it's directly outside the city store, the famous club shop of Manchester City. And to be honest, it's actually a pretty good place to shop. There's plenty of things that you can buy whilst you're here at the city store, from their iconic sky blue shirts to their rather cool away shirts with this cool color fade logo. Their third kit for this season is absolute garbage and there's plenty of photo opportunities around the shop itself. And the price for merchandise here isn't actually too bad. It's about right. They don't add 10% like they do at Manchester United. There's a live music venue directly outside the club shop, and it's called City Square. This is where they put bands on pre-match, and also they've got giant TV screens showing you highlights. But it's a pretty cool bustling place, and you've got to hand the neighbors credit they make a serious effort to try and entertain the fans before the game. Be sure to check out the outside of the Colin Bell stand, the main stand here at Manchester City, where you can watch the team buses arrive and the players arrive. And as far as photo opportunities go, this is a very, very nice place to take photos and videos. All right, so you've had a wander around the stadium, but you're probably getting pretty hungry. Fortunately for you, there's plenty of eateries dotted around the outside of the stadium. Most of them serve junk food, of course. You do get the occasional vegan place, like that green thing over there. If you want to drink, I highly recommend checking out the Summerbee Bar, named after one of their former players, Nicky Summerbee. And there's various other food outlets, such as grilled cheese outlets, the Blue Moon Cafe. And on a nice day like today, it's just nice to get some food, sit on a bench, and just chill out and soak up the pre-match atmosphere. Especially when they've got the giant screens playing video highlights, it's actually kind of nice to kill off some time. But as you can imagine, the food around the stadium can be quite pricey. So there's various eateries outside the stadium which are significantly cheaper. If you like familiarity, there's a McDonald's right across the street. And if you're on a super budget and you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money, there's an Asda also across the street. For those of you who don't know what Asda is, it's a big giant chain of supermarkets. This is a good opportunity to pick up cheap beers, cheap snacks to bring into the stadium. And if you're really hungry, they have an express diner where you can feed yourself full meal for under a fiver. If you're into that sort of thing, of course. Okay, so you've got your tickets, you're here, you've had a walk around and you've been fed. Now it's time to go into the stadium, but that can be easier said than done. Firstly, you'll need to find your gate, and it will be guarded by these men in orange. Manchester City have imposed a strict baggage policy, so you can't bring any bags into the stadium unless it's from the official City Club store, or it's smaller than an A4 sheet of paper. And there's lots of things that you can't actually take into the stadium itself. If you need to drop a bag off, see one of the people dressed in luminous yellow, and they'll point you out to the bag drop facilities, where they can store your bags for a charge. Once you're ready to go into the stadium, they'll do a quick baggage check and they'll search you pretty intensely. So be sure to have your phones and wallets out of your pockets. It speeds up the process massively. So once you've been checked, fire up the ticket on your phone 
and you'll literally need to go to the turnstile and push your phone into one of these blue holders here. This will scan the barcode and read the NFC on your phone and once it goes green, push through the turnstiles and away you go. It's literally that easy to access the stadium. And when you're in, have a walk around the concourses. They're pretty big and they're pretty modern and they're not at all cramped like the other stadium across the city. In case you need some more food and drink, there's plenty of places where you can buy that here at Manchester City. But the views from everywhere in the stadium are pretty good and you'll be surprised at how nice the stadium actually is. And once you've found your seat, take in some of the lovely views that you get from here. It really is one of the nicer stadiums that I've actually been to and you're actually really close to the pitch, which is surprising given that this is a former athletics track. Guys, you're halfway through the video and it's competition time and I'm giving you the chance to win this free bag of swag that I just bought at the city store. Stick around to the end of the video to find out more, but in the meantime, back to the video. So, let me show you around the stadium from here. What we're looking at right now is the Colin Bell Stand, aka the West Stand. This is probably the best place to sit and it's the view that you'll get if you're watching this on the television. This is the Family Stand, the smallest stand in the stadium and it's usually where parents take their kids to watch the game without the hooligan types. On the other side is the South Stand. This three-tiered stand is the place where all the bloodthirsty Manchester City fans sit and it's right next to the away fans. We're right here in the East Stand which is a very nice place to sit especially if you're on the lower half. But there's one thing nobody tells you about the East Stand and it's that it acts as a sun trap on very sunny days and you will literally be baking in the sun. So even the stewards here pretty much struggle because of the heat and the sunlight. So this is my seat for the day, virtually slap bang in the middle on the halfway line and the view from here is pretty damn good. By the way, there's no point getting here an hour early because the teams only step onto the field to warm up 40 to 30 minutes before the actual game starts. So there's no point being here like 90 minutes or two hours before the game actually starts even though they open the stadium that early. But here is a good chance to see the teams warm up and interact with the mascots, if you can get close to them of course. But when the match is about to begin, the stadium fills with fans and the atmosphere is pretty damn good. So like I mentioned, the view from the lower half of the Etihad Stadium is very, very good. You don't feel like you're a million miles away from the action like some other stadiums that I've been to recently. And today's opponents, Southampton, they're actually very, very good and they decided to become a really stubborn team here today. They're a team that aren't afraid of the champions and from minute one they try to make life as difficult as humanly possible. As you can see from the footage a lot of people are struggling to see and that's because of the sunlight and the heat. So if you have a pick of tickets seriously sit in the Colin Bell stand opposite. And oop, Southampton have reverted to time wasting tactics. Again. They're doing pretty much everything to slow down Manchester City and at half time it ends 0-0. There's a really negative stereotype that Manchester City don't have real fans and that their fans don't actually turn up to the games but I don't find that to be true at all. In fact, I find the opposite. The stadium is packed out most of the time and every time I come here the stadium is always full. And the fans are always good people. They're Manchester folk at the end of the day, they're very very nice people and they do show up to the games and they are true fans. The guy I'm sat next to has been a fan of Manchester City since the 60s. In the second half it's pretty much more of the same. Southampton being stubborn, Manchester City struggling to find a way through, disallowed penalty for Southampton, disallowed goal for Manchester City and the game pretty much ends up as a nil-nil stalemate. And right here you can see the disappointment of the City fans once they've realised that the goal has been chalked off. A decision so disgusting that some of the fans actually left at that point. But overall, whatever happens on the pitch, I guarantee that you'll have an amazing time here at the Etihad Stadium, especially if you're watching a quality football team like Manchester City and even Southampton, they were actually pretty decent on the day. Right, full time, nil nil, game's over, let's get the hell out of here. As you can imagine from a stadium that holds just under 55,000 people, when they all try and leave at the same time, it can be pretty cattle-like. And outside the stadium, there's a mad scramble for everyone to get the hell out of there as fast as possible. It can be pretty disorientating with the amount of people there, so if I were you, I would memorise the way you came and literally go back that way. 
So it's back over the bridge we go, and you get this lovely view of everyone leaving the stadium. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why you do not park at the stadium. Because there's so many people leaving, most people just walk along the roads, meaning that you won't be able to drive anywhere, and you'll be stuck in this for at least 20 minutes to half an hour. If you've arrived via the trams, you won't have such problems. So when you leave the Etihad Stadium, especially if you're in a car, you'll be in gridlock traffic, just like all the cars right behind me. Unfortunately, there's no real way of getting around this, it's just one of the things about mash day traffic. And even if you park a mile away from the stadium like I do, you'll probably get stuck somewhere, but the traffic is nowhere near as bad, and at least you'll be moving. Fortunately, if you know the back streets of Manchester like I do, you can drive along a lot of backcountry lanes and uh, side streets, and you can avoid most of the traffic, but you really gotta know how. But overall guys, I highly recommend that you visit the Etihad Stadium for a Manchester City game at least once in your life. The stadium is fantastic, the football is quality, and the people are absolutely lovely. Definitely add this to your bucket list if you're a fan of English football, football in general, or if you just want to experience what Manchester has to offer. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to the city of Manchester Stadium, AKA the Etihad. Tickets are available on their website, and most of the time they're available for general sale. You'll need to be a Citizens member if you want the tickets to the big games, and you'll need to make some qualifying purchases as well. So bear that in mind if you're here for a big match. Cup games are your cheapest option, as they're generally significantly cheaper than league games. However, the league game availability isn't too bad. The overall cost of it? Well, tickets range from about £36 for adults, and the kids' tickets are actually quite reasonable. Be careful though, because the cost of food, souvenirs, etc. can quickly add up here in Manchester. I've already mentioned about some of the ways that you can get here to the Etihad Stadium. Admittedly, no way is perfect because Manchester traffic is pretty terrible. But I must admit, the Etihad is a lot easier to get to than Old Trafford, even though they're roughly the same distance away from Manchester Central. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, whilst the traffic links are slightly better here than at Old Trafford, admittedly, you're still going to be packed in queues, you're going to be stuck in traffic, and there's lots of police officers that are going to be redirecting you in the wrong direction. So bear that in mind, when you are coming to or leaving the match, you might be redirected to a place that you don't necessarily want to go to. Starting this season, there's a new baggage policy here in the Premier League, so basically, don't take any big bags in with you because they won't let you anywhere near the stadium with it. In some stadiums, such as this one, there are bag drop facilities at a charge. And the one thing they don't tell you about, around the stadium, the front rows of each block are significantly cheaper than the rows at the back. And there's a reason for that. Some people have their views restricted from stewards, from the benches, from referees, etc. So bear that in mind, if you do get tickets to the front row of the stadium, you might have a little bit of an obstructed view. But overall guys, if you are here in the city of Manchester, I highly recommend that you take in a match day here at the Etihad Stadium. The match day is fantastic, and I highly recommend doing both one at City and one at United. Check out my other video to see what that's like, and if you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below, and if you've got any other bucket list ideas, feel free to tweet them at me. If I get enough suggestions, I'll go ahead and do that. So guys, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Right guys, it's competition time, and I'm giving you the chance to win this Manchester City goodie bag that I bought at the City store. This comprises of a Manchester City scarf, a Manchester City magnet, a Manchester City pennant, a Manchester City bobble hat, this cool bag that I received from them, and if this video gets over 100,000 views within 30 days, any replica shirt of your choice in your size. To enter, click on the link in the description below, and help me share my content if you like this sort of thing. Good luck! Now, regulars of my channel will know that I'm a Red, and have been for quite some time, but not a lot of people realise that I actually used to live a mile that way. Yes. I'm a former West Gorton resident, and yes, I know, I know, in theory, I should be a blue, not a red, but you like who you like. Back in the day when I was a kid growing up around here, 
it wasn't too uncommon to go to Main Road one day and then Old Trafford the next week, so I got no problem with the neighbours. I like what they're about. I like their stadium. I like their players and manager. Good set of fans. I have no problem with the neighbours whatsoever.